Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the slide identification tips and tricks of systemic histology. For better understanding of histology slides and easy identification, we are making series of video. So in the first video, we have seen basics of slide identification in histology where we have seen mainly about the epithelium and the glands okay in the first video we have seen the epithelium and glands and in the second video we have seen the complete general histology based on a flow chart how to identify each slide by ruling out based on a flow chart we have seen so this is the third video here we'll see the systemic histology part one the complete systemic histology is divided into two parts. This is the first part. So I strongly recommend you to go through the remaining two videos. Since in this video, we are going to see uh, what are the combination. If we put uh, this kind of epithelium and this kind of connective tissue, what will be the slide? So like that, we are going to see. So first see these two videos, then come back to the third for better understanding. So as I said, this is the part one of systemic histology. Here we are going to see the respiratory system first, then the gastrointestinal system. Then we are going to see the intercommentary system that is the thick skin and thin skin, renal system and glands which is associated with the gastrointestinal system. So let me start with the respiratory system. In the respiratory system, only two slides are there. Okay, so uh, if you have seen the first two video, you can able to identify the epithelium clearly. So what is this epithelium? This is nothing but the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells okay so here you can able to make out the goblet cells then one more thing what you can able to see is the what type of cartilage is this this is the hyaline cartilage okay so there is only one slide which has both these combination it is a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with hyaline cartilage is the slide of trachea okay so one more slide where you can able to see is the lung but where the alveoli everything will be in the background okay so uh, for the easy identification of the trachea slide i strongly recommend you to go through the how the uh, tissue look like in the slide okay in the slide usually it will be having a that uh, c-shape uh, cartilage okay so otherwise if it is collapsed it will be almost like this okay you can able to see the this kind of appearance macroscopically also when you see the slide directly so this is the slide ident identification feature for trachea moving to the second slide so you can very well answer this as a lung okay so here you can able to see lot of alveoli okay so these are all the alveoli actually this is the respiratory bronchial this is a respiratory bronchial where the alveolar sac is connected okay so this is probably the terminal bronchial from there the respiratory bronchial starts okay so which containing the alveolar sac and here you are having the atrium and the alveoli This is the bronchi. Okay, so what is the difference between bronchi and bronchiole? In bronchi, it is uh, more than one millimeter in dimension, and it will be having a segmented hyaline cartilage. You can able to see these are the piece of segmented hyaline cartilage. Okay, so under microscope, you can able to see very well clearly. These are the segmented hyaline cartilage. Okay, so if the, 
the hyal cartilage are segmented if it is present then it is definitely bronchi if it is less than 1 mm then there is no hyal cartilage then we'll call it as a bronchiole so this is the slide of lung you can very well answer okay so this is a slide of lung alveolar lined by the simple squamous epithelium let me clear this so this is also an another slide okay so here you can able to see the this is the bronchi sorry this is the bronchiole because the segmented cartilages are not there okay and here you can able to see the multiple alveoli then moving to the gastrointestinal system so for your easy understanding because there are a lot of slides in the gastrointestinal system so i have made a flow chart which help you to rule out and identify the slide very easily okay so to say it is a gastrointestinal system most of the slide in the system follows this rule it is lined by the simple columnar epithelium with four layers okay here you can able to see this is the simple columnar epithelium okay so this is the simple columnar epithelium here you can able to see the cells are arranged like this a nucleus are bit towards the base okay so the columnar epithelium will be arranging like this the nucleus will be placed longitudinally in the towards the base of the cell okay and as i said four layers this is the layer number 1 mucosa then submucosa okay third one is the muscularis externa then the fourth layer will be having the serosa or adventitia okay so if these four layers are there and the lining epithelium is the simple columnar epithelium then you can very well label it as a gastrointestinal tract in this the first thing you have to see is either it has villi or doesn't okay so based on the presence or absence of villi we can divide it into two broad category if villi is present there is no other word it is only the small intestine because small intestine is the only region in the complete gi tract which has the villi okay second thing if villi is absent so it may be a stomach colon or appendix it cannot be esophagus because esophagus is not lined by the simple columnar epithelium which is lined by the stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium okay so now we are saying it into the two broad category whether villi absent or present okay so before that i want to introduce one more term so how to differentiate villi from pits okay because all this region wherever you can able to see stomach colon and appendix it has the pits not the villi okay so if it is pits it will be from the lumen it will be going down okay so so the surface will be almost smooth in case of villi okay so this is the pit it is a, either a, it is present in stomach colon or so will label it as a gastric or intestinal pits okay if it is a villi from the lumen these are the finger like projection so the luminal surface won't be straight as you see in the villi okay as you see in the uh, pits so first try to understand the difference between pits and villi okay so now i'll show you the histology image see this here here the this is the luminal surface here the luminal surface is almost straight okay so this is these are the pits from the luminal surface this goes down and coming back to the luminal surface so these are the pits this is not villi okay and here if you see the villi villi are finger like extension so its topmost region is bit irregular okay it is not a kind of smooth it is bit irregular the luminal surface is bit irregular so this is the typical feature of villi so if villi is present it is small intestine 
if villi is absent so it is not small intestine it may be either stomach colon or appendix hope you understood this concept so coming to the next step if the villi is absent okay so that means pits are present then you have to see the amount of goblet cells if goblet cells are more okay plus 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 if goblet cells are more then it is a colon or large intestine okay so here uh, from the anal canal from the oral cavity oral cavity towards the anal canal goblet cells will keep on increase goblet cell will keep on increase so if you take the stomach the goblet cell will be very very minimal you, you hardly see the goblet cell in the stomach but towards the large intestine it is much more almost every alternative cell will be the goblet cells see this is the appearance of goblet cell wherever you can able to see some empty appearance these are the goblet cells okay you can able to see almost every alternative cell is the goblet cell so this is a uh, slide of large intestine okay i'm having the complete slide this is just to show the goblet cells in case of stomach see this is a, a stomach actually the pylorus part of the stomach here you hardly see goblet cells okay so it is easy to identify when you see it under 10x itself okay so you hardly see the goblet cell that it is a stomach so appendix is the region where the lymphoid aggregation is present okay so see this is the mucosa just below the mucosa you are having the lymphoid aggregation okay like uh, the lymphatic tissue which we have seen there will be high density of lymphoid tissue okay if the slide is bit old or faded without having the somatoxylin you can able to see some dot dot appearance okay i am having slide will show you so hope you now understood if the villi is absent these are the possibilities let me see one by one see try to identify what is the slide okay so purposefully i haven't given the uh, labeling so you can uh, try to identify by yourself is it villi or this is a luminous surface okay is this villi or pits this is definitely not villi because the surface is smooth in nature okay so these are pits so villi is absent so when the villi is absent you have to see the number of goblet cells see what is the amount of goblet cell which is present okay in both the side the goblet cells are much more almost every alternative cell is the goblet cells okay so that means this is the slide of large intestine or colon okay so this is a bit higher power the first one okay it's a bit higher power this is a bit lower power okay but you can able to see it. this is a bit hazy okay but you can able to see goblet cells here also so if there are more goblet cells and there is no villi and you can able to make out the four layers okay so that is the first point if all these rules are satisfying then it is a slide of large intestine or colon moving to the next set of slides these two are the two different slide okay so this is the another one these two are the two different slide here we can able to make out is uh, try to identify is this villi or crypts yes these are the crypts because you can able to see the smooth outline towards the luminal land okay uh, it is not an irregular like villi okay so these are all again the crypts here also same almost the luminal lining is similar okay so this is also crypts so this is not the villi then uh, try to see the cells which is present here okay so first let me start with this slide here you can able to uh, make out this is the crypts crypts are going like this okay so the cells are lined inside the cells are lined inside like this here if you see the lower part of the cells here okay so from here to here you can able to see these are the some glandular epithelium almost like a mucus gland can you able to see here these are almost like a mucus gland and these are like a conducting part a ductal system okay these are modified like a duct and here the glandular part is located 
okay so this is uh, here can you able to make out any goblet cells no the goblet cells is very very minimal that means you can't able to make out the goblet cells at all so what is the slide as per the a flow chart which i have given so this is the slide of stomach okay stomach in the stomach there are two part one is the fundic part and pylor pylorus part okay fundus and pylorus what happen in pylorus this conducting part can you able to see this conducting part this part will be more than half of the more than half of the total length of the mucosa if you take the total length of the mucosa this gastric uh, glandular part will be half and this ductal part will be half when you take uh, in the fundus fundus you try to see this is a complete gland okay in this only the upper one fourth is a kind of conducting zone okay this whole thing is a secretory zone which contain many type of uh, parietal cell absentic cell mucosa neck cells okay so here in the gastric fundus you can able to see the gastric pit is almost less than one fourth of the total thickness of the mucosa here in the pylorus it is more than half of the total length of the mucosa so hope you understand the uh, how to differentiate the stomach fundus and pylorus part clearly moving to the next slide here you can able to see the important feature that is the lymphoid aggregation okay lymphoid aggregation and here the epithelium will be very uh, the uh, mucosal part will be very small okay so uh, if you zoom and see this region you can able to see every alternative cell is again the goblet cells okay so in most of the places uh, the in the appendix the mucosa won't be clear okay here you can able to see only the smaller region of the mucosa mucosa because of appendicitis most of the slide taken from the pathology so in the in case of appendicitis due to inflammation you uh, you can't able to preserve the epithelium but clearly and if the slide is faded you can't able to see this uh, distinct uh, color of uh, uh lymphoid aggregation also it will be having multiple dot like appearance okay i want you to see both the slide so that it will be easy for you to identify in your college okay if it is a freshly stained and uh, the gastric glands are clear then you can able to see the goblet cells and lymphoid aggregation if it is a uh, uh, inflamed appendix then you can't able to see the uh, the epithelium clearly and if the slide is faded you can't able to see the lymphoid aggregation in a distinct hematoxylin color okay you will be having only eosin but it will be like a multiple dot like appearance okay if you take out and see the slide separately or if you see under the microscope you can able to see the lumen okay because uh, the, uh, the uh, total diameter of the appendix will be small so most of the slide you can able to see the complete lumen itself so this is a slide of appendix so moving to the next flow chart that is the if the villa is present okay so if the villa is absent we have seen the possibilities either it is a stomach colon or appendix okay if the villa are present so there is no other go it is only the small intestine so based on the different features like submucosal burner gland pays patch both are not there okay based on these feature we have divided the small intestine easily into duodenum jejunum and ileum okay in case of duodenum you can able to see the submucosal burner's gland okay so which is nothing but a kind of uh, mucus gland mucus glands you can able to make out okay pas patch is nothing but the lymphoid aggregation okay so in the git if the lymphoid aggregation is there with villi then we'll call it as a ileum if the lymphoid aggregation is there without villi that is the crypts or pits then we'll call it as a appendix okay it's, it's easy to identify okay if the villi is there and it neither has submucosal burner gland or nor the pas patch then you can label it as a 
JG now. Okay, it's like a ruling out of remaining possibilities. Now we'll see the slide proper. Okay, try to see here. Can you able to differentiate the will life from the clips? Yes, these are all the will life. Okay, different projection you can able to make out. Okay, so these are all definitely will life. Okay, when the villa is there, can you? This is the muscularis mucosa. Okay, here you can able to see. This is the muscularis mucosa. Here it is not that much clear, but it will be around here. Okay, this is the muscularis mucosa, and you are having the glandular part. This complete part is the submucosal glands. Okay, due to very faint staining, you can't able to see the gland clearly. But usually these glands are mucous in nature. Here it is not clearly visible. Okay, submucosal glands are this permanent glands are mucous in nature. Okay, so will I with glands in the submucosa? Then you can easily label it as a duodenum. Okay. Then can you able to see the will I here? See the luminal surface is not clear. Okay, this this circle appearance is nothing but the will I's are taken. Obliquely, will I circle obliquely? So, in the cross section, you can able to see the circle. Okay, so this is a long transection. So, here also you can able to see the will I part very clearly. Okay, and in the faded slide, you can able to see the lymphoid aggregation. Okay, distinct lymphoid aggregation as a dot like appearance. And in the freshly stained slide, you can able to see the lymphoid aggregation clearly with the germinal center also. Okay. So here you can able to see the lining epithelium, simple columnar epithelium also. So this is a slide of ileum. Then coming to the third slide with the villi, same thing. You can able to see the villi clearly. Okay. And you neither have the submucosal glands. Okay. Nor there is a lymphoid aggregation. So this is the slide of Gigino. By ruling out, you can easily identify the all the three slides okay so i'm just uh, uh, giving a brief thing okay if, if it is small intestine then it will be having a villi out of which duodenum has the burner gland and a jejunum ileum will be having the lymphoid follicle so both are not there then we'll call it as a jejunum okay so this is the complete thing i'm not repeating again so just go through the chart so that you can able to identify almost all the gastrointestinal tract slides. Okay, I said almost all because there are few exceptions that we'll see in the upcoming slide. See this. So what is this epithelium? Definitely this is not the simple columnar or okay. So here this wavy pattern is a typical feature of stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, is it keratinized or non-keratinized? Okay, you can't able to say thick layer, so it is non-keratinized. So stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinized. Okay, with all the four layers. Here you can able to see this is the mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer. Okay, this is the muscular layer. And the serosa uh, adventitia is further down. So four layer. And in the submucosa, you are having again the mucus gland. So this is the slide of esophagus. So this is one of the exception. So from the oral cavity to esophagus, it is stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium. Beyond this point, we are having the simple columnar epithelium. Then what is this? You can able to see the same same wavy pattern here. You can able to make out. Actually, this is the papillae. Okay, so leave that. First, we'll try to identify the epithelium. Okay, so this wavy pattern, this is the stratified squamous epithelium sometimes the tip part will be having keratin layer because this is a slide of tongue usually the slide of tongue will be taken from the mammals so in the mammals the tip of the filiform papillae might contain few keratin okay and this is the skeletal muscle okay multiple cross sections of uh, skeletal muscle you can able to make out Filiform and fungiform papillae you can able to make out. If it is a circumambulate papillae, you can able to have the classical appearance like this, the trench on the either side. Okay, in that case, the 
taste buds will be present just surrounding this trench okay if it is fungiform papillae you will be having the taste buds in the top filiform doesn't have the taste buds then this is uh, one of the slide in the gi itself okay some associated structure this is nothing but the slide of gallbladder okay so how to identify this same you will be having a simple columnar epithelium okay here you can be able to see simple columnar epithelium but the total thickness of layer is very small this is the whole thickness this is the whole thickness because here the submucosa layer is absent submucosa is absent okay so this is the typical feature of gallbladder because of that the whole thickness will be small you can able to see this is the mucosa first layer second layer muscularis externa and third layer you are having the serosa or adventitia okay so because of that muscularis externa and the uh, muscularis mucosa both are coming in same contact with each other you can't able to differentiate those layers okay so submucosa is absent same simple columnar epithelium okay you can able to easily identify because of its thin layer okay so this is a slide of gallbladder see this is one of the accessory gland of GAT here you can able to see some kind of triad like structure the venous structure like that okay so this is nothing but the central vein and the portal triad okay so if it is a single structure it will be central strain central vein if it a uh, triple structure then it, it will be the porta portal triad the structure which is present at the portal triad and these are all the radially arranged hepatocytes okay so uh, you must have heard about the classical hexagonal appearance in case of uh, liver but this is not seen in most of the slide because this classical hexagonal shape of the liver will be seen in the uh, slide which is taken from the rat or smaller animal in human the connective tissue in between this classical hexagonal part is not clear so you can't able to see it clearly you can just able to see the radially arranged hepatocytes that is the identification feature for the liver okay so hope you can able to identify the liver easily here also you can able to see this radial arrangement so what is this plan you can able to see if you see in the first two video you can able to identify this as a serous gland serous gland okay but in between that this region is something different which is nothing but the islets of Langergaard. okay so the group of cells which is located in the ocean of uh, serous gland okay so this is nothing but the slide of pancreas okay you will be having both serous gland with group of islets of Langergaard. okay so this is a slide of pancreas so that's how we have completed the respiratory system gastrointestinal tongue esophagus stomach pylorus pundus duodenum jejunum ileum colon or large intestine appendix along with the liver gallbladder pancreas and spleen is covered in the previous video along with the lymphatic system okay now we are moving to the uh, renal and the integumentary system so first we'll start with the renal renal there are three slides okay kidney ureter urinary bladder okay so out of which these two will be having transitional epithelium this kidney you can able to identify very easily by locating the glomeruli see these are the circle which showing the glomeruli in the kidney okay how to identify the glomeruli glomeruli will be having a central mass okay surrounded by a Bowman's capsule so in between this urinary space you can able to make out okay can you see I will show with a pointer okay can you see here the urinary spaces there here 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 
wherever the glomeruli is there you can able to make out the urinary space clearly okay then apart from that you will be having multiple cross section or long term section cross section or long term section of pct and dct okay so only with the presence of glomeruli along with the urinary space you can able to clearly identify the site of kidney okay then what is this epithelium this is nothing but the transitional epithelium because even the topmost cells will be having umbrella shape okay cytoplasm will be there sometime there may be a binucleated cells also okay so uh, this is in the high power in the low power if you try to observe here okay even in the topmost cells will be having some kind of cytoplasm okay uh, in other kind of cell you can't in the stratified particularly in the stratified epithelium you can't able to see the cytoplasm in the topmost cell if it is there then you will label it as a transitional epithelium or urothelium okay and here if the transitional epithelium is there you try to look for the lumen if the lumen is clear then it will be ureter if the lumen is not clear and you have the thick wall of smooth muscle then we'll label it as a ureter okay sorry if the thick wall is there then it is a urinary bladder if the lumen is visible then it will be a ureter okay so consider this as a urinary bladder i will show you the slide of ureter so that you can understand it better see this is a thick layer of smooth muscle okay along with the transitional epithelium so it is a urinary bladder see here so again multiple layer you can able to see if you closely observe even the topmost layer will be having the cytoplasm okay nucleus is visible surrounded by the cytoplasm okay and here you can able to appreciate a kind of lumen probably the star shaped lumen okay so this is a slide of ureter okay so what kind of slide is this first try to identify the epithelium this wavy pattern okay again i am coming to the wavy pattern wavy pattern means stratified squamous epithelium whether it is keratin or non keratin see the topmost layer you can able to see a thin sheet of keratin so it is a keratinized here same wavy nature you can able to make out but thick layer of keratin okay so this is a slide of thin skin and thick skin okay apart from that what are the other identification feature for thin skin thin skin will be having the hair follicle and the sebaceous gland okay so this is a sebaceous gland which is opening into the hair follicle okay so hair follicle with sebaceous gland you can able to make out in the thin skin in the thick skin these are all the parts of sweat gland okay duct of the sweat gland you can able to make out the sweat gland in the thick skin okay hair follicle and sebaceous gland is absent in the thick skin with that you can able to differentiate between the thin skin and thick skin hope you understood the part one of the systemic histology so in the part 2 of systemic histology we will see the male reproductive female reproductive nervous system endocrine and other miscellaneous slide hope this video is helpful for you so uh, subscribe to our channel soon we'll upload the part 2 of systemic histology kindly share this with your friends thank you